Today we're going to be going over 10 of the worst weapons in Fallout New Vegas. Now there's a lot of particularly bad weapons in Fallout New Vegas for one reason or another. Our very first one is the Time Bombs. Time Bombs can do a lot of damage. This is a made weapon. I think you might actually be able to find a few Time Bombs laying around in the wasteland as well. But if not, then you can always make them on a workbench. You put these together. You don't need very much explosives to actually make these. And they do have really high damage stats. The main problem comes is when you're trying to use them as they're, I guess, kind of intended, where you toss them down and you wait for an enemy to run across them and they blow up. Now they are timed, so it doesn't work like a mine where once something is in close proximity, it blows up. It does have to tick all the way down. And using it like that is very difficult and finicky to use the time bombs. There is a much better way to use them though, <laughs> where you toss them on the ground, wait for an enemy to get close, and then shoot them with a gun or shoot them with an explosive, that makes it far easier to hit them. That is actually a pretty effective way to kill a lot of things in the early game. So if you combine this with a weapon, it is very strong. By itself, I would say that it's not as strong. I guess you could reverse pickpocket and put them into people's pockets. That would probably kill them. Other than that, I wouldn't really want to use time bombs as a primary weapon. They're okay as a secondary weapon once you have something like a grenade rifle and you have a decent amount of grenades with them, and I guess a decent amount of time bombs too, then they can be fairly effective. At number nine, we have the flare gun. Now the flare gun isn't really intended to be a weapon, which is why it's so low on this list. And there's gonna be a couple of weapons on here that are kind of like this, where the flare gun itself, if you try to use it as a weapon, it's pretty garbo. It takes a lot of flamer fuel to actually use, where it takes 10 per shot, and it's nowhere near as good as other weapons that use flamer fuel, like the flamethrowers. It does very low damage per hit. It's a single shot pistol. Even in VATS, it's not that good because it takes a lot of VATS points to actually use. Even though you can hit enemies, light them on fire, and deal damage over time, it's still a lot of the fire over time that's going to be racking up your damage, which is not a great way to stack a bunch of damage. The main way that this is supposed to be used is to scare off death claws and to scare off tunnelers. And if you use it just for those rolls, it's actually really good then. It's really good as a tool just to scare them away. So that's why it's kind of here on the list because it still does have a purpose. It's just not a combat or at least combat oriented purpose. Coming in at number eight, we have the rolling pin. This is probably one of the worst melee weapons in the entire game. Now, yes, you can still kill enemies pretty easily with this, but that's more due to the fact of melee perks and melee being pretty strong in general. Not really that you're using the rolling pin. The rolling pin has basically nothing for stats. It does very low damage, very low damage per second. Doesn't even really have a special for its VATS attack. It just lights out like a lot of other melee one-handed weapons have. And it's actually pretty rare to find rolling pins. You kind of have to go out of your way to find them. So you're not going to find these really by accident and just by looking at them stat-wise, they're pretty awful. You can't get one real early into the game unless you want to run to Freeside right away or run to a couple of vendors that might have them, in which case then you can potentially get it. So by the time you're getting to the rolling pin, it's already been completely outcompeted by a bunch of other melee weapons that you could have, especially if you start out with the tribal pack where you get the broad machete. That one kind of beats a lot of early game weapons. Of course, you could always run up and get Chance's Knife and beat out almost every melee weapon in the game right away too. And like I said, if you're doing a dedicated melee run, this one can still be effective because you still get Slayer, Super Slam, Piercer, uh, or Piercing Strike, and Purifier, where it's like this can potentially kill really big enemies fairly quick, but it's more so your perks doing it and any other melee weapon could also do it, so... It's not really that impressive when the rolling pin can do it too. Coming in at number seven, we have, I guess, an upgrade to the rolling pin, which is the police baton, but the police baton is also not really that great. You can get it earlier than the rolling pin, but it has a similar issue to the rolling pin. It does low damage, low damage per hit. At least it attacks fairly fast, so it can take advantage of some melee perks like Slayer or uh, Super Slam. It's just, it's still not a melee weapon that's worth using by the time that you can get it. You can probably find a baseball bat. You could probably find, well, you could definitely find the shovel by then. You could probably find a lead pipe by then and just find something better and use that over the police baton. It's really not a weapon that you're going to use for any reason. A lot of these like melee weapons that don't do much, this or the pool cue or whatever it might be. I didn't include the pool cue on here, but that one could also go on here, are just kind of used for jury rigging fodder. And that's about it. And then at number six, we also have another melee weapon, which is the cleaver. The cleaver is a little bit better than some of the other weapons we've talked about because it at least does extra limb damage, but that's where its pros go. After that, it's still the same old cons. Doesn't do that much damage per hit. Doesn't do that much damage per second. It does attack fairly quick. 
So crippling enemies and again the perks for melee can make this really strong, but that's it. it it's just again you're relying on perks to make you overpowered, which that is a perfectly valid strategy in Fallout New Vegas. It's just that the weapon is not really helping you there. Coming in at number five, we have the Long Fuse Dynamite. The Long Fuse Dynamite is honestly not a bad weapon either. It does do pretty good damage because it is an explosive weapon. It's just that it's difficult to use because the Long Fuse makes it so you have to kind of lead this quite a bit. Throw it where enemies are going to be and then either just run around it until it blows up and you can kill them or throw it and hope that the enemy can come to it as it explodes. That's probably the best way to use Long Fuse Dynamite. It does work decently well in VATS too, so it has that going for it. It's just this one is an awkward weapon. Dynamite itself is kind of an awkward weapon. The fuse time takes time to get used to, and the bounces of the dynamite can be really weird too. They're not nearly as easy to use as just something like frag grenades, and you're probably going to phase these out as you get better explosives if you're doing a dedicated explosives build or if you just want to be having some sort of thrown explosive onto your build you're probably going to swap these out for frag grenades as soon as you can coming in at number four we have the bb gun uh, this again is not really meant to be a weapon it has been a gun that's shown up in a lot of fallout games so far and it is a pretty funny weapon it holds 100 rounds it does very low damage per hit low damage per second funny enough this is affected by the cowboy perk because this does count as a repeating rifle that doesn't really help it that much Crit damage is probably the best way to use it to where it can do a little bit more damage and there's no unique ammunition types that you can load into the BB gun. It's just BBs so you can't even get armor piercing or hollow points or anything like that for the BB gun in general. The unique BB gun is actually pretty good because the unique BB gun has really high crit damage so if you do hit crits with it it's hitting like the same as a brush gun at least in terms of crit damage. The standard BB gun though it doesn't really benefit from anything and really you can only use it to fight weaker enemies like rad roaches and bloat flies which you can fight with anything else even your bare hands can probably kill them quicker coming in at number three we have the cattle prod this one is another just very underwhelming melee weapon for some reason it has very high requirements to use it does low damage per hit low damage per second although it does have a fatigue build up on it which does make it interesting but it's on a melee weapon so it's not as good as it could be because something like super slam exists where you can basically do this by yourself you could also do this much earlier than when you would be able to get a cattle prod just with boxing tape or the boxing gloves. That does make them also a better option. And if you're going with an unarmed build, you could also do paralyzing palm. Once you hit an enemy enough, they then collapse onto the ground and then you can continually beat them up. That is kind of strong, but it would be stronger if you just hit something with the cattle prod and it fell down and then switched weapons. And at that point, you could do this a lot easier and a lot safer at range if you went with like the compliance regulator, which is a very strong weapon to do that. Or you went with and stand back and basically any shotgun. Or if you just wanted to go with beanbags inside of a shotgun, that could also knock enemies down and then you just walk up and melee them. And then there's also some weapons like I believe Knock Knock has this with their unique VATS attack where it just knocks enemies down. There's just so many weapons that can do what the cattle prod does better than what the cattle prod does. At number two, we've got the fire bombs or the molotovs. These ones are extremely disappointing, which is very sad because molotovs are usually extremely fun in games, but not so much in Fallout New Vegas because these work very similar to dynamite, but are way, way more underwhelming than dynamite. You don't have to throw these, they can bounce. And then after so long, they explode and deal fire damage in a very small radius to everything around it. So it's really difficult to actually get these onto enemies. It's sometimes impossible for faster enemies if you're just chucking these down. They don't seem to explode even when you hit something directly with them. In most other games, the Molotov would explode. In this, it doesn't. It just hits, falls off, and then explodes by the time the enemies ran past it. You can use these in VATS to make it more accurate to hit enemies, similar to how you can use that with the Long Fuse Dynamite but it's still just so underwhelming a lot of the time. These are only really good for selling. That, that's the only purpose that firebombs really have. Even if you wanted to stack everything onto this, Pyromaniac and like Explosives Expert, if you find incinerary grenades, they're just gonna be way, way better than this and way more consistent. And then coming in at number one, we have the Sea Finder. The Sea Finder is a very fun weapon and a very goofy weapon. I really like that it's in Fallout New Vegas. It's just it's not a very good weapon. This is the space laser weapon and you really have to go out of your way to get this and to get it working. And then once you do get it working, you get a pretty mediocre weapon. This weapon you have to buy in free side from a kid there where either you need to pass a barter check, which is going to cost you, I think, 20 caps. I think it's 20 caps if you buy it that way. Otherwise, it's going to be a thousand caps from him. So 
you're already spending probably a thousand bucks into this unless you invested early into barter and then you have to do a quest just to get this working so then you have to go and do this old son or that old son and make sure that you route all the power to the sea finder itself then once per day you get a space laser that you can shoot which does do pretty decent damage but it's once per day and that is a long time for you to use it you also can't use this indoors either it's only outdoors so it limits to where you can use it it's a single shot per day, which is, it's just going to take you a lot of time to wait 24 hours each time to use this weapon. And it's really only good for like initiating a fight. It's not really good during a fight because it's really difficult to use. You have to wait for the laser to line up and then it fires. And if you're using it during a fight, that means enemies are probably running towards you. Unless you're fighting really long ranged enemies, in which case they might be far enough away for you to get some value out of this. Most of the time it's best if you sneak into a position and use this before an enemy knows that you're there and then continue the fight without the space laser and just use that as initiation. Then it can kind of work. The weapon is also extremely heavy for some reason. I think it weighs 15 pounds, which is very, very heavy. I think it's the heaviest uh, one-handed energy weapon. It might just be the heaviest one-handed weapon in the game. Just a weapon that is very fun to use, but not very practical in any way. These are my 10 worst weapons in Fallout New Vegas. Tell me what your 10 are down in the comments below. There's actually quite a lot of them. If you'd like another one of these lists, feel free to ask me because I actually have probably about another 10 weapons I could come up with that are just not that great. Hope you guys enjoyed this and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.